The last episode was extremely poignant and beautifully represented the end of an era. How much research, I'm guessing, went into the authenticity of the holiday camps? Well, Jimmy well, David knew it, didn't know. Jimmy, Jimmy Perry had been a red coat at Butlins. David Croft had produced um, variety shows, professional shows at different holiday camps throughout. Those guys knew what they were writing about. Absolutely. They, they'd met the Ted Bovises and, and the, the, the grandpa old um, children's entertainers. So they, as, as at their previous shows, they, they just wrote about what they knew about. And so research, great research wasn't needed, I guess, because they just knew it. I think the way that last um, episode with, uh, you know, Peggy getting her yellow coat was absolutely, I mean, appropriate, you know, mm. because she, how many years did we do it? About seven years. And, you know, she was on the brink of getting this yellow coat and never got it. I think we always, yeah. said, we always said right from the start, if Peggy wants to be a yellow coat, she should be given the yellow coat, but not until the last episode. And oh, that, yes, absolutely. Jimmy, Jimmy yeah. uh, had that same thought. Yes, and it was just absolutely brilliant the way they did it, you know. But it's the writing, isn't it? Because they knew their subject. Yes. You know, or they knew it like the back of their hands. Um, so therefore, we, all we had to do was interpret it. You know, I mean, we, we weren't allowed to alter one syllable no. of the script. You know, it, it was just, uh, and if you wanted to, I, I mean, I remember them once saying to me, you don't seem very comfortable. It was something about a, a, a Welsh way of pronouncing um, uh, something. And uh, I said, well, sh forgive me for saying so, but this is how you would do it in a Welsh accent. And they let me keep it in. But that was about the only time. And the other, other time when um, they said, you can add lib to me. Oh, add lib. <laughs> I said, are you sure, David? He said, yes. He said, um, it was the um, scene in, in the office with Simon Cadell where... Um, Gladys had brought in a bottle of champagne she had given to her. And um, I'm going to open it because I was told to open it on camera. And I didn't know. But David had got the props, lads, to shake this thing up. So it went everywhere. And he said to me, if it goes everywhere, Ruth. I said, what do you mean if it goes everywhere? It's not going to go anywhere, you know. Um, he said, if it does, what are you going to say? I said, oh, oh, we are feeling frisky tonight. And that was it. <laughs> and that's what I did <laughs> in the take, because it did go everywhere. But it was purely because David had decided that uh, the props boys were going to shake it up. I couldn't believe it. I opened it up, and there it went everywhere. <laughs> of course, I have to say, Sam Cadell was in on the joke. <laughs> uh, which leads me quite nicely into uh, another question that we've had uh, um, and um, after this question by the way I want to get to uh, Ricky I know I think she might not be with us for that long can the team share their memories of working with Simon Cadell wonderful man I mean watching Simon work was like watching a master class wasn't it it was just yeah. incredible um, he left us early of course to go and do um, Shakespeare <laughs> uh, and um, he's passing at what, the age of 45 was just a tragedy just a, a wonderful wonderful actor um and I, go, I, I had a little chat with him one day i remember he, he used to say he, he never wanted to know what he'd be doing in six months time he just liked to live you know as we went along but he's just a, a wonderful man just such a sad loss yeah well when he decided to leave david and um i can tell you now because it was in the second series and he didn't tell her so. He told me not to tell anybody. And of course I didn't. And he said to me, I'm going to stay on for four and then I will leave. And I said, um, are you sure, David? Are you, are you sure, um, Simon? And he said, um, yes, he said. Primarily because of exactly what you said. Yeah. He liked to go on. He didn't want to be stuck. And he said to me, and I would like to see you go with me, Ruth, your character. And I said, well, I can't really do that. I said, I've got a girl in a private school and I need as much money as I can possibly get. 
because I had a lot of people that I was looking after, i.e. my family. And um, he said, oh, that's a shame. He said, don't send him to anybody. And I didn't. So, uh, uh, but I knew all along when he was going to go. And I didn't send anything to David. I didn't say anything to Jimmy um, because I knew that I would be staying on. So it was his, I mean, his decision to go. And it was uh, after the fourth series, I think he left. Yeah, went to Henry V, Henry V. Yeah, you know, so but he, it was because it, it wasn't anything to do with the fact that that he didn't like Heidi High or he got fed up with it. It was to do with the fact that he needed to carry on. He needed to expand. And of course, as we've all said, you know, he was a past master um, at, at acting and that light touch, that comedic light touch. And, you know, to have um, Bell's palsy, which he was born with, and then to use it as something that, you know, made people laugh it was amazing. Yeah. He was like acting with velvet. Yeah. That <laughs> he really, really was. That's a really beautiful description. But uh, Ricky, I do want to hear from you uh, before we, we, we lose you at any point. So do you have any memories uh, of uh, like nice memories or, or blooper memories that you can uh, share? Well, I was talking to Nikki earlier today and she's really sorry she can't be here tonight. And unfortunately, all all our memories are sort of <clears throat> not able to be spoken about on camera. <laughs> um, it's the best way of putting it, I suppose, because we used to do a lot of tricks on each other. Um, I think I think the whole thing of Heidi High was um, extraordinary. I, I remember you were asked earlier, somebody asked about the authenticity. And I remember the first, the pilot, and we were asked, we ended up staying in the original chalets. Do you <laughs> And I mean, these original chalets were from the 50s. And it was like, I am I allowed to swear on this? Are there any children watching? But I remember somebody... I think you're good. I think you're good. I, I remember somebody, I think it was the wonderful makeup artist whose name I've forgotten. And she just said, you know, it was kind of that really old line from Holiday. Who do I have to mm to get off this set? Because <laughs> they were so damp and so horrible. And I remember just... It was, it, but it was extraordinary. And I haven't had a lot to do recently, as you know, with coming to all these reunions, but my biggest memory was from that pilot and everybody had a little bit and it wasn't a hundred percent decided really. I think they had an idea, but they were kind of going to watch what happened, who became the main characters. And I remember the moment when, um, Sue Pollard did one or two lines. She only literally had one or two lines. And it was so poignant and so like, ooh. And they went, ah, okay. That's that's one of our main threads. And that's the other thread. And um, it's interesting thinking back now, because I don't, I don't think about it that much, that it was very clear um, from that pilot what they picked out to make the main threads and the main oh, stories. Oh, yes. Yes. Um, so I find that fascinating looking back at it. Um, yes. Um, what can I tell you? I, I, I bloopers. I really can't because I will be probably something illegal. But um... <laughs> <laughs> maybe if we get a donation big enough, maybe I might no, uh, tip the balance. Yeah, well, yeah, I, think it was a I promise, Nikki, I wouldn't say anything. Um, yes, I, I, we had lots of giggles earlier where we were just shrieking with laughter about uh, bloopers. Uh, I don't remember any bloopers. I, I, maybe I. Well, we got so proficient at actually doing it to camera. We do everything in one take. You know, actually everything. I mean, it was one take wonders most yeah. of the time from all of you. You were brilliant. I mean, I, I mean, I remember my only greatest memory of being in Heidi High was I would go out or I go to somebody's house and there'd be a supper party or something. <laughs> People would say to you, hello, how lovely to see you again. I go, I've never met this person before because I wasn't one of the main characters, but I zoom, I just kind of beamed into people's televisions every Sunday evening that they thought they kind of knew me. And I'd sit there for the whole di supper going, hmm, yes, lovely, yay. And then at the end they go, oh my God, I've just realized I don't know you, you're Betty. And I go, yeah. <laughs> and, and one of my main memories of Heidi High was the how incredibly 
um, how much influence, not influence, but how it was just in everybody's sitting room. And people thought they knew everybody. Yeah. And everybody saw me and I only had a couple of lines a week, but they kind of thought, I know her. I've met her before, haven't I? And I think that was the brilliance of it, is all the characters were so real and and poignant and difficult and spiky. Yeah. And, you know, there was a little nod toward being gay before it was appropriate and before everything was, you know, it was on PC. Um, nowadays, it would obviously be very different that... Uh, it it touched a lot of people and it touched a lot of people i suppose now ricky um that you, would we be able to have done that comedy now i'm not quite sure you see what with the woke lot you i know. think well i well it was based in the 50s so you can get away with a lot yeah so you can get away with it you get away with it but i think you know barry's character it was always alluded to, but never actually. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then other characters, there were other things that it was alluded to, but never yeah. actually. So I think that was the kind of brilliance of it. And it was that kind of gentility of the 50s where everybody didn't acknowledge or realise. And a lot of the audience, of course, remembered the, the holiday camps with affection. This is just before, yeah. uh, you know, the Absolutely. continental holidays came in. So yeah, one members of, of Butlins, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. A week's holiday for a week's pay. That's pretty yeah. Cool. Uh, so uh, I will now start the quiz. We got round one, which is a guess who round. Um, and uh, basically, when you want to answer a question, just say your name. The screen will switch to you, and then you can answer. So, um, question number one: What's the name of Jeffrey Fairbrother's wife? Oh, Jeff. Where? No. Anyone else? <laughs> Anyone else? No. Oh, that Marion? No, I think Jeff got it. Jeff? That's me. Yes, correct. One point to Jeff. Uh, like question... Claire Oberman played it. That's why I thought it was yeah, Jeff. All right, really good. All right, question two. What was the French name of the Scottish girl that took a shining to Spike? Francois. Oh, Jeff is in there again. Boom. You didn't say your name, though, but I'll still give it to you. Uh, this time from now on, you need to say your name. All right, uh, question three. Who owned the chain of butcher stores that tried to get one over Joe Maplin? Oh. Gosh, I don't know. <laughs> Good <for> that one. <laughs> no, no. Charlie Dawson will move on. Completing the name of Joe Maplin's right-hand hatchet man, the smiling what? Viper. Viper. Oh, whoa, whoa, lots of... Who said that first? I'm not sure. We all did. The draw. Yeah, we all did. All right, it's a draw. All right. We'll share the point. Say again? We'll share the point. You'll share the point. Oh, one point to you. Uh, what was Jeffrey's big fluffy white dog called? Spider. Jeffrey. No. Snuffles. Snuffles. No, that's not what I have on my list. <laughs> it's Jeffrey's <laughs> No, it's <laughs> Bubbles, apparently. <laughs> bubbles. 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, no memory of that. Uh, what's the name of the resident band that played at Maplin's? Ruth. Oh, gosh. Is he, no. La Fre Fred Larkin? No. And no, it Devin starts Nair. with Bert, apparently. It starts with Bert. Bert Swanley and his Swanley and the Debonairs. I think, I think David, I think you kind of got in there just under before Ruth. Can you say that again, David? Bert Swanley and his debonairs. Yes, you got it. One point to David. Uh, what's the name of the chap who helped Julian? Not sure of that name. D D D Dairy Maple S Sykes at his pig farm? The pig farmer. Oh, Brian Bird. Brian Bird was there. Bird. Oh, yeah. Billy Bird. It was Billy Bird. Billy Bird played it. Billy Bird. Oh, no, I've, I've got, I need a character name. Mr. Something. Mr. Ooh. Oh, played by Billy Bird. Played by Billy Bird. Yes. Billy Bird. Mr. Turner, Mr. Turner, we'll move on. Um, what is the name of the gangster that Fred thought he was uh, that was going to get him in revenge for swindling a race at Brighton? Well done. Big Mac. Yeah, Mac, one it? point to Jeff. Uh, what is the name of Fred's horse that got poorly and Ted gave his winnings for the Fet Bill? Um, oh, gosh. Oh, was it... Oh, goodness. Blue Bell, Blue Bell. No, no, it was flight, 
And then last question of this round, what was Ted Boffis's, Ted Bovis, Bovis's, uh, ex-wife's first name? Oh, Ricky. Mavis. 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 No. Mavis. no. Think something Clinton, something Clinton. Hillary. Yes, Hillary. yes, that's a point. I heard Jeff. That's Jeff. That's Jeff. Based on Ricky Lee. Ricky Lee. Yeah, Ricky Lee. Oh, okay. I have no idea, but probably, yep. Okay. Yeah, no right. Cool. Ricky Lee. Fabulous artist. Well, wonderful. Dukes and Lee, double act. Great. Yeah. Did right. they die? Did you... I think they have, but um, I don't I know. I think her husband did. I don't know if Duke, Ricky Yeah, had. wonderful act. He died just yeah. before she did it. Oh, did he? Oh, bless him. And what then he died that? afterwards. And their son. Not long afterwards. Their sons played drums in the stage version of Heidi High. That's right, their sons. That's right, his son, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Drums and guitar. Drums and guitar, wasn't it? In the stage show. Yeah, one, one of the best club acts ever. The family. <laughs> cool. So, guys, I've got I've got two more rounds. I want you to do one of them so we get onto the uh, the Q and A a bit more quickly. We have got guess where and guess what. So, what would you prefer, guess where or guess what? Guess where. Guess, guess where. where. Guess where. Yeah. All right, let's do that. So, guess where. Where did Gladys and Jeffrey get locked into when trying to scupper the plan for sabotaging the mighty mountain of? Pitsabu, Pitsabu, Pitsabalu. That's the one. Uh, we got locked in the um, Three Bears Cottage. Correct. One point to Ruth. Where did Jeffrey like to imagine he was when he couldn't sleep when he was a little boy? Oh, was in a flower pot. Yes, correct. That's another point to Jeff. Uh, where was the new Maplins in, inter, intercontinental <laughs> camp where Sylvia was going to re, re, relocate for winning Miss Yellowcoat? In the Caribbean, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Jamaica. Was oh. it Jamaica? Barbados. Barbados. Uh, I got Bahamas, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll give Barbados. Um, and then where would you find gold in them da hills? Oh. Oh, didn't they have a hunt, hunt something or other? Um, gold hunt, a treasure hunt? No. Tre no. No, that was a giant haystack. Uh, which county links Jeffrey Fairbrother and Clive Dempster? Cambridge. Yes, that's a point to Jeff. Cambridge, yeah. Um, where did Barry injuries back, forcing the entertainment's team to find a replacement in Julian? Sorry again? Where, where did Barry injure his back, forcing the entertainment's team to find a replacement in Julian? Oh. In his chalet. Chalet, yeah. No, I, I got... the wallpaper. Power. <laughs> no, I got I got top of a ladder, and then we'll, we'll uh, just do one more question. Where did Ted and Spike discover Uncle Sammy? On the beach. Yeah. On the beach, correct. That's another one for Jeff. Cool, Yay. guys, give yourselves a round of applause. Well done. Yay. Well done. Yay. Well done, um, we got lots of answers that came in on on the chat uh, as well. Um, I think it's fairly clear to say. People in the chat, yeah. correct me if you think I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure Jeff won that. I go oh, pretty that. sure, pretty sure Jeff won. So well oh. done to Jeff. Hi, hi. <laughs> Howdy, hi. <-o. laughs> 